All right, guys, let's run you through our off-grid touring setup. Now, we do tow a caravan 99% of the time, but we set the back of the 200 series up for this so we can leave the caravan and just go out of the car. So the reason this video is to run you through the provision side of things. We have done a full run around on the car. If you want to watch that i'll link it after the video so this is just our touring setup the biggest elephant in the room is definitely our rear drawer setup so we wanted to build this um, and it is a behemoth drawer setup but it is perfect for doing what we do so it is by tanami full driving commercial they're out of victoria the special thing about this drawer setup is that it's fully aluminium so it weighs bugger all and it's custom designed this ourselves. We've got the 85 litre Bushman's fridge that houses all of our cold food and it has a little freezer inside, as you can see there. It's a really good size fridge for us, for two people, we find. We've also got a pull-out drawer here with a pull-out table. So that just simply pulls out when we want to cook dinner. And we've also got a little plate to go on top of here for prep space. So we're running the 1800 watt June full drive induction cooker. Now we're new to induction cooking. Hope Harry Fisher from Fire to Fork's not watching, but this has been an absolute game changer. Not having to carry gas bottles and stuff saves a lot of space. And we just picked this up from Anaconda. It was 59 bucks. Yeah, we use it every day. This is one of our favorite things about the setup. Now you're probably wondering what's powering this thing because induction cooktops do require a lot of 12 volt power. We're running that off an iTech World 2000 watt inverter, but I'm gonna save the 12 volt to last because it is super special. I designed it and I'm very proud of it. So moving around to the wings. So we've got an airbag kit, which we use to level out the back of the car. We can raise and lower it by about 7,500 mil, which is pretty good. Oh, Sarah's, <laughs> Sarah's just falling down a sand dune. Oh my God. So the way the airbags work, we just got a little switch here. And this is our gauge. So if one side of the car is unlevel, we can, we can even it up. Now these are, airbag helpers and they're inside a coil spring so we're not going to get the full lift of like a caravan airbag or you see them airbag kits on flash four drives these days that lower it a lot this just gives us a little bit of uh, variation um, and it does come in handy a lot of the time this is our little inverter panel so to get 240 volt power you just flick this on and we've got 240 volt power which is really good we've got two light switches one's here one's an orange light it's just a steady light and this is really good for preparing food so obviously it's daytime now, but at night, this actually illuminates a massive spread distance. And yeah, we can cook and, and eat quite comfortably around here. And we have been having a few dingo issues, so it's good to have some light to be able to spot the dingoes coming. So we've also got another light around the side here. That one's lighting up under the awning there, which we'll get to the awning in a minute. Now, the rear bar we have is a cruiser company rear bar system. Now, as you can see here, it houses our water. Water is probably one of the most valuable things when you're going off grid. And anyone that does big trips knows that this is probably the most important thing to carry is water. Now we normally carry a few goon bags worth of drinking water as well, around 20 litres plus the 220s here. So we normally carry around 60 litres for a trip like this. This, this water is for washing up. Um, we also drink this water once we run out of drinking water. But yeah, that's really good. And we've just thrown some Bunnings taps on the sides and that just allows us to access the water really easily. Now one, really rookie mistake that I made was not strapping these down and the other day we hit a bump they jumped out the, the tap actually got ripped off when it jumped out and we started gushing water now if you're on a trip that's not Fraser Island say you're doing the Simpson Desert or Canning Stock Route that would be a massive issue so I definitely recommend strapping your, your jerrys down in the back so anyway the rear bars not only housing this but another thing that it has a byproduct of We've got the swing away wheel here, but this is also our bin on this side. So, because we are on Fraser Islands, the dingoes over here are right. The Grab Me Gear bin bag, we absolutely swear by these, a double layered. I'm sure you've all seen this before, I love this thing. It's got a separate layer inside that removes and you can just tip that out in the bin. So, the awning that we're running, we get a lot of questions about the awning. Now, we bought this awning uh, off a mate, so we're not sponsored by the Bush Company, but this is a Bush Company 270 XT awning. It's about three or four years old and it's only been used a handful of times so far but we absolutely love it we get it out every opportunity we get and it's super quick and easy it takes about 20 seconds as you can see no poles completely freestanding and uh it's it's really good in strong winds definitely held held up really well as you can see one thing to add though it's all good the awning's really strong but the brackets that you use to secure it to your roof rack also has to be strong too that's probably the biggest Achilles heel with 270 awnings. People use cheap brackets 
ripped them out, big, expensive, heavy awning stir, and it just doesn't work. So make sure your brackets are really good as well. Quickly address what we carry in the, the drawers in the back here. So in the bottom drawer, this is a bad habit. You should never keep your recovery gear in your rear drawers. A lot of the time you can't access it if you are really bogged um, or if you're in tight situations. So I keep that in there 90% of the time. I really should have that out now. Um, we keep all of our tools in here as well in this bottom drawer, trying to keep the weight as low as possible. In the top, we keep air hoses, surfboard fins. This is pretty much my drawer because Sarah can't reach it. Um, we keep all of our sprays and stuff in there. All the stuff in the drawers is in Grab Me Gear um, canvas bags. These are all clear top so you can see what, actually what's in the bags. We keep our jet boiler um, and other bits of profanity in here as well. But like you can see here, drawer space is a premium and it definitely fills up. So we actually can't fit all of our groceries and stuff that we, that we carry. So we actually have to keep a can box. Now this is probably the most basic can box you've ever seen, but it does the bloody trick, I tell you that much. All the stuff that you see today, you definitely don't need. Um, you could definitely do trips like this with absolutely nothing, a rollout swag um, and a few cans of baked beans. But we do this full time, so it's important for us to be comfortable. Um, and, and this setup is designed exactly for us. So let's run you through this bloody can box right here. Have a look at this thing. Kmart special, eight bucks. And uh, she's an absolute beauty. So I'll get Sarah to run through the can box and some of the goodies we carry to save weight and space. All right, so this is our camp box. It's 52 litres and it literally fits everything we need. It just slots in on the back seat there, so it's not taking up too much space. On the left-hand side here, we've got all of our dry food and that fits all just in one big Coles bag. Usually what I'll do before we leave is I do a full menu plan and then all of our dinners I'll pre-cook freeze them and then they just slot in the freezer and then in the fridge as well. So you just take them out and cook them. To cook with, we use these stackable pot pans. So everything slots in between each other. It is by Outback Explorer. And the handles click on and off. So it's all packs away, super easy. Inside there, we've got our bowls and plates. They're by Daisy Grace. And a full plate and that bowl set. And it's all biodegradable. So we absolutely love that. Another handy thing about these pots and pans is they come with a little silicon lid. So last night's leftovers. Are actually in the fridge with a lid on there so it sort of saves you having to bring Tupperware containers with you and taking up more space so they've got a double purpose which is absolutely great. Onto our camp chairs now these ones are super cool we haven't seen anything like this before these are called buck wild chairs and you can get these from Outback Equipment but they pack up to that size pretty much just a little bit bigger than a foot long subway and all you got to do to set them up is shake them Super quick, look at that, it's already set up. Everything just goes straight into place. And then you just get your little canvas roll here. You put the tops on first, just like so. And they weigh bugger all. I'd say these chairs weigh as much as the subway as well. And look at that, the chair's set up and it takes up no space, they're super lightweight and they're perfect to keep in your car. So these are from Outback Equipment. We have a discount code SKT5, we'll get you 5% off. The pots that Sarah just showed you also from Outback Equipment. And yeah, we are stoked to have these chairs. They're one of our favorite parts of our setup. Super quick and easy. Look at that. Spoken about the awning, probably the next important thing is where do you sleep? Now, we've had rooftop tents before, we've had swags before, we own a caravan, so we've sort of done the whole kit and caboodle in terms of sleeping arrangement. Normally the progression with sleeping, you go swag, or so you go tent, and then you get a swag, then you get a rooftop tent, and then you get a camper trailer, and then you get a caravan. The only one we haven't done is camper trailer, so we've gone back to the swag. Now that's for a few reasons. This one's from Dometic. The reason we, oh, full disclaimer, we're not affiliated with Dometic at all. The reason we chose this was because we have a weight issue with our car and caravan. We are right on our weight, so we can't carry things that are really heavy. So we have to think about that. Now this weighs bugger all. I'll put up on the bottom of the screen the exact weight, and it packs up to a package that will fit in our tunnel boot in our caravan. That's pretty much why we chose this swag. It's a two person and it's air inflated. So you pump it up, takes about a minute to inflate and a minute to pack up as well. We love it. Probably our 10-ish, we've spent probably 10-ish nights in it so far. 
the mattress isn't the comf most comfortable mattress we've ever slept in. However, the ease of use, the lightweight, and how compact it is definitely outweighs the con of it not being super, super comfortable. So we are loving that. I don't have a saw back or anything, so it's obviously not too bad. All right, so if, you, if you're interested in this swag, you can get this from Outback Equipment as well. So same as the chairs and the pots, SKT5 will save you 5% off this swag. So we definitely approve of them um, and they're definitely the goods. Let's move around to the 12 volt system. Onto the 12 volt. Now this is probably my favorite part. I'm an electrician by trade. We designed this setup, wired it, installed it all ourselves. So I'm very proud to show you this. So pretty well, the heart of the system, we're running a 240 amp iTech World lithium battery under here. So yeah, 240 amp hours, that's plenty enough to run the fridge, the induction. We've never had it below 80%. Um, and also that runs all of our lights and stuff. This is the inverter. So this is a 2000 watt iTech weld inverter, pure sine wave. Um, and that works an absolute treat as well. The way we charge this system, we've got a 40 amp DC to DC charger. We've got 210 watts of solar on the roof, which keeps it 99% most of the time. Also though, we got alternator charge going into that as well. So it keeps it topped up most of the time. We never get this thing under 80%, like I said. We've got our fuse panel right here, um, and we also have a cell fire go booster. Well, this thing only works if you have a little bit of reception anyway. It boosts that signal, but if you have zero reception, it doesn't work at all. So we also carry Starlink when we're in the caravan, and we're looking at sometimes bringing the Starlink if we're doing an extended trip in the car. Um, so yeah, that's the 12 volt system. We also carry our jump starter. Now, I think this should be in everyone's touring off-grid kit. The amount of times I've saved myself and other people with this jump starter. This one's from iTech World as well. Now, right now, iTech World are having an up to 90% off sale. If you use our code SKT, it'll get you 5% off store-wide on top of their sale prices. So right now is the cheapest time to buy any 12 volt gear, whether that's solar panels, batteries, chargers, whatever it is. Now is the time. You're going to save the max amount of money that you're going to save. So anyway, that's the 12 volt system. We're very proud of it. So we also carry a 300 watt flexible solar blanket. That stays in the caravan. But if we're doing a massive trip with the car and we're going to be parking the car up for a few days at a time, that's probably something that we'd look at carrying as well is a little solar blanket. 300 watts is getting around 17, 18 amps. So it's a big blanket. Um, and if you didn't have a solar panel on your roof, Carrying a 300 watt blanket would definitely be the go. So anyway, this is our system. I'm very proud of it. And yeah, it's all neat and tidy. We've used ducting to hide the cables. I think it looks schmicko. What do you guys reckon? The last thing we'll speak about is something we get asked all the time is where do your surfboards go? Because they're not on the roof. So I ride about six foot surfboards and they fit perfectly on the back here. We've bolted them down using some eyelets um, on top of the draw system. So if we did have an accident, um, touch wood we never have an accident but they don't go flying through the car so that's where we keep them really safe and secure there and we think it's a great spot keeps a lot of this space empty and this is also where that big box goes it just sits right here the swag goes here um, and we've still got a lot of room to play with which is awesome we weren't sure about how it was going to work because a lot of the time when you plan things in theory it doesn't always mean in a practical sense they're going to work all right so another thing we run in our touring kit is a tire pressure monitoring system now this is a safety aspect, but also if you do have a puncture, you want to know about it pretty soon because you don't want to let all your air out of your tires. And then you roll your rim off the bead because you've got no air in your tire and you have no idea because you're on the sand. So this kit is from iCheck. That's iCheck with a CH. Uh, this is an invaluable piece of equipment. It'll save you a lot of money in rims. Um, and these just screw straight onto your tires. So that all it is is a Bluetooth sensor and that monitors temperature, but also pressures. And that just screws straight onto your valve stem, like a valve cap would, you don't even know it's there. That communicates with this solar panel device that sits on your dash, it tells you your pressures, and it'll alarm at you because it thinks it has a flat, because I've disconnected this from the tire. The reason we chose this tire pressure monitoring system because it offers features that other ones don't. It's solar paneled, so no cables. Also, it has caravan disconnect mode, plus, it has spare disconnect mode and on and off-road mode. So once you drop your tires, you're still protected. You're still monitoring your pressures. It's not gonna alarm at you because you've dropped your tires to go on the beach and it thinks that you've got a flat. So that's why we run this kit. It's the best in Australia. Right now, it's end of financial year sales. So Sam is absolutely freaking crazy. With every one of these sold, he's also gonna give away a Pro Series deflator set. So these are his deflators. 
They're the most accurate automatic deflators in the country. They've got pressure set points marked on them and they come with valve um, cores as well for repairs and also caps as well. So if you lose your cap. So that's his Pro Series. This is valued about 110 bucks. You get a free, this is free when you use the discount code SKT10. So that's our discount code, SKT10. It's only for our followers. He's given back to us. Um, so yeah, right now is the time to buy a tire pressure monitoring system. Oh, and plus you get 10% off and free shipping with our code SKT10. Rightio guys, that wraps it up. I hope you've enjoyed this video and got some valuable ideas that you can incorporate into your off-grid touring setup. Like we said earlier, you don't necessarily need all this stuff. My mum did the Nullarbor and travelled around a lot of Australia in the back of an old Cortina with a rollout swag and an icebox. So we've built this setup because it's our dream setup and it works for us. It doesn't have to necessarily work for everyone else. End of financial year sales are on right now, so don't miss out on them. I'm gonna flash up our discount codes on the screen in a second. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you guys next time. Woo.